Yeah. You can, Marge. Yeah, thank you. Great. Okay. So uh, my name is Marge with Simons. I work with Include. Um, Include is a registered charity as well. I don't know if many people know about Include um, up in Donegal, but um, we are going since uh, 2006. Um, we work mainly with charities and also with nonprofit organizations. So, um, sorry, just one second. I'll just move these things around. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Yeah, so we have a staff of about 25 people. Um, they have all different, all really good different backgrounds and an awful lot of really high techie people. Um, and one of the partners that we have is TechSoup Global, which is an American based organization, but they work with partners in every, practically every country in the world. And so we are their partner in Ireland. And through that, we facilitate the TechSoup um, tech donations program where tech donors like Microsoft, Adobe, um, Bitdefender donate software to charities and nonprofit organizations. And we help facilitate that. So in each country, there'll be a similar organization to ours. And again, we're all nonprofit that run this program. And uh, true, since we started the programme, we've provided donations to over 2000 organisations in Ireland and um, IT solutions as well, which is like our Salesforce CRMs and accounting packages. We've facilitated those to over 400 nonprofit organisations. So the, our mission would include as a charity is to bridge the digital divide for non, the nonprofit sector. So for us, technology is kind of king uh, in that the more people can utilize good technology, they can help their mission to sort of reach out to people in the community. Because we don't work directly in the community as a charity, we work with other charities. Um, and the idea is that by utilizing good tools, they can save time and money to do. And so this is some of the partners that we work with. Um, we work with, have worked with Belong to, uh, DePaul. Uh, one of the CRMs that we've been working with over the last couple of years, um, we've developed a Salesforce CRM for domestic violence organizations. And so Safe Ireland came to us with a big project about three years ago, just before the pandemic kicked off, that they wanted to try and have a number of their, of the organizations in the domestic violence area to come together and have basically the same solution so that they could then amalgamate their data and report better on it. And that was hugely valuable when the pandemic kicked off because um, they were able to then go to government and say there has been a, an increase in um, incidents of domestic violence and calls for their service. So it's at the moment, there's, I think there's over 30 uh, organizations, domestic violence organizations in Ireland using the same, basically the same system. They don't interlink, but they're able to report together and amalgamate their data. So that kind of thing is hugely valuable to the sector. Um, so essentially, we kind of have two arms of include. We have the tech donations program, and then we have which sits separate to the CRM and accounts systems. And um, I look after the tech donations program with my colleague Michelle. And things that are available through that is like Office 365 and Zoom, which uh, we're using here today. And with Zoom, you can get a 50% discount through our program on your Zoom package. Um, Norton Team Defender. So there's a huge amount of uh, solutions there that are available for people to use. And again, it's things like being able to save money is a really key thing. So for the Tech Donations Programme, really who's eligible is a charity, a registered charity who has the old fashioned CHY number, the charitable organizations registered with the charities regulator who have an RCN number, Sports bodies, 
that have a GS number. So they're registered with revenue as a sports body who's eligible for tax, um, a tax exemption. Uh, companies limited by guarantee. So if you're a CLG and registered as a, and operating as a non, on a non-profit basis for public benefit, that's the key with anyone who's registered as a CLG, that you're operating for the public benefit and have a CRO number, you can, you're eligible for this programme. And all you need to do is quite simple to qualify and register. So you can go to our website, techdonations.include.ie and register. And then we will request some validation documents just to validate that you are who you say you are. And then once you're validated, it usually takes a few days, probably about three days, usually four days for us to go through the whole process. And then once you've done that, you can go onto our website and use our catalogue. And it's like an online, any online shop. You find the product you're looking for, you place your request, pay your administration fee, and then within two days, you could have the software. So we've helped over 2,700 organizations at the moment are registered and qualified with our program. And last year alone, we helped them save 1 million euro, which is a huge saving for the sector. So some of the savings that you can make, and so these are just some of the products that I'd like to highlight today that I think are quite useful for, for a lot of organizations. There's a new, with Adobe, they brought a new uh, offering. It's Adobe Express Premium, and it's totally free. Um, any organization anywhere can get Adobe Express Basic. And it's it's basically, it's it's similar to, um, their Adobe Creative Cloud, it would have a lot of the resources like the um, images and features that would be av available through the Creative Cloud are available through this Adobe Express. So anyone can get the basic package, but for the premium plan, it's totally free to nonprofit organizations and charities. You can get a one year membership and you can get up to 10 accounts on that. Um, so it's really useful for creating graphics and videos. Then there's Adobe Acrobat Pro, which a lot of people use, and that's donated. And it's, it's donated by Adobe. There's an administration fee that goes partly to ourselves and partly to our partners, TechSoup, um, to facilitate the program. Um, and that gives you a license for, generally speaking, it's three to four years that you would have that license for. So it's a huge saving because Acrobat Pro is quite an expensive package to purchase. And it's really good for PDF documents. And then, as I referred to earlier on Zoom, you can get a 50% discount with Zoom. You pay include the, the 18 euro administration fee. And once you've paid that fee, you within a day or so, you'll receive an email with instructions on how to apply your discount. And so the discount would apply to every license on that Zoom account. So if you have two or three licenses for Zoom for different members of your organization, that discount, 50% discount will apply to all of them. So you pay Zoom directly, but you just have a discount code that you, you obtain from Include. And then for uh, antivirus software, Norton offer the 360 Deluxe, a one year subscription for five devices. And that's donated and the administration fee on that is 17 euro. And it's it, it basically it's software security and um, it does dark web monitoring. It has a firewall password manager. So it's really quite useful and it has PC cloud backup as well. And the other one, then another option would be Bitdefender. And there's a huge range actually from Bitdefender of different products, depending on the size of your organization and your need. But I just showed this one as a sample. And it's for five euros. Again, it's donated to the administration fee for that is 25 euro. So it's similar to the Norton, but it's just a different program. And again, all our products are on our catalogue where you can see the range of items that are available. Um, for all, well, for most people, Microsoft is kind of something that you just use every day. You're not even aware you're using it. You're using it for maybe for your emails. You're using it for your Word documents, your Excel documents. And um, so 
Microsoft have historically donated very generously to charities and nonprofit organizations. Um, they changed their program about 12 to 18 months ago, where they stopped giving their office standard to everybody and have now restricted that their office standard is just for public access machines, where it's donated at a min fee of 36 euro. So that's the case where if you, your organization has a, maybe one or two laptops, desktops that they leave in their premises for public, the public to come in and maybe access the internet or send an email or download documents, those are eligible for this donated license. And it's so that the essentially, so it means that the external people don't have access to your network if you're on cloud. But they still, Microsoft still donate their full pro operating system. And that's the administration fee on that is 25 euro. And that's a one off fee. And you have that for as long as the license is, is there. Um, if you're looking for office standard, it's still available through, through our program, but discounted. And the administration fee on that is 126 euro but it's a perpetual license that's on premises that sits on your desktop and includes those features that, the, you know, the usual apps that people use like Word and Excel and Outlook. The reason, one of the reasons Microsoft has moved away from just donating their on-premises software is that they're trying essentially to get people to move to the cloud because they feel that this is more beneficial to people because it gives you more security features and also more ease of access to that you can use when you're using Microsoft Cloud. Doesn't matter what laptop or desktop you're on or where you are. If you've got internet access, you log into your Microsoft Cloud account and that's it, you're ready to go. And you know, for people that had this when the pandemic kicked off, it was great. You were able to just go home with your laptop and work away. So they, they still donate and grant a huge amount of uh, licenses to organizations and the one business basic is free it's just very standard it, but it gives you access to all the applications like word and excel and outlook online and uh, this business standard is 278 per user per month that's comes with the downloadable applications uh, like word and excel so you can work with them on the cloud or on your desktop but the key one is the business premium license and Microsoft sell that at five euro 11 per user per month. Um, and like if you were getting that retail, we think it's about 18 to 20 euro per license per month, um, which is a huge, huge difference in savings. Um, but Microsoft donate 10 of them to every eligible nonprofit organization. So if you're using Microsoft Cloud and you're a nonprofit organization, you should be utilizing those 10 donated license. And that's a huge saving for your organization. And the security features that are in business premium are really, really good. Sorry, I think I skipped too far. Okay, so this is a little bit more about the Microsoft Cloud solution for the donated business premium license. It includes access to Office Web and the desktop applications like Word and Excel, and you can download those applications as well. It gives you a, a, up, any upgrades that come along for Windows 10, it gives you that. It has enterprise mobility and security, posted email, and they give online storage of one terabyte for every license. So that's a huge amount of storage. Um, for most organizations, you wouldn't need, any user wouldn't need more than that. Collaboration tools like SharePoint and Teams for sharing files. And then again, Teams is so useful for people as well for communications so that if you have teams, you can do your video calls or you could just have a chat. It's great for sharing files as well. And then you can use their forms which uh, to create a survey for feedback and that the uh, Microsoft forms filter into Excel for reporting. And um, I will share links afterwards. I'll share these slides afterwards as well through Margaret. Um, because I think that it'd be useful afterwards because there's a couple of links in it. And um, one of them is an introduction that we have to Microsoft to let you know just the basics about it. And also the include TechSoup training courses. So in partnership with our partner TechSoup, 
we give access to uh, training courses online. And they, there is a fee for those, but it's things like you can do training courses in things like Teams or Zoom, or, sorry, Teams, Word, Excel, SharePoint, how to use those uh, applications. And it can be really useful for people. And then going away from the tech donations program end of things, um, our solutions, um, which is um, mainly Salesforce. And also we do Accounts IQ. Um, so that's a cloud-based Salesforce CRM system. I don't know if any of you guys are using this already or you've heard about it, but essentially we work exclusively with charities um, because Salesforce will donate some licenses to charities. Um, and so we work on consulting with them and developing their uh, CRM system to suit them. And because we work only in the charity sector, we understand generally what your needs are and what might suit you. And at the moment we're um, developing, a, if you like, a, a sort of small package that would work for sort of like a starter pack for a CRM. And we're trying, we're, at the moment, we're looking at uh, pricing that between sort of like three and a half to 5,000 euro as an initial setup. And then if you need additional things added on to that afterwards. Works is when you're in your Salesforce CRM solution and you want to send, maybe you have appointments with people and you just want to remind them about those appointments. You can send a text message directly from the Salesforce system and it can all be set up to automate, automatically be done. And so the message goes out to the client, they get the text message. If they reply to it, that comes right back into their account on Salesforce, gets updated, and you can get a report on that to see have they acknowledged their appointment. And we did um, a, a case study recently with um, Purple House Cancer Support. And they reckoned that by using this system, they save their organization. One person was saved a, a day a week on their administration that they would have had to do for this previously. So that in itself is huge sa savings for an organization and it just makes it more smooth as well for the clients. But we will work with clients to co-design their systems to make sure that you know, we can build a really good system for that. And then we also provide training courses and webinars um, for our clients to keep them up to date on new features and just to help them with their training. And so we've worked with homeless people, uh, homeless organizations like Peter McFerry, um, Simon Community, domestic violence organizations. And um, we also work with um, other network organizations like The Wheel, uh, Mental Health Ireland, Volunteer Ireland and the uh, PPNs. So we've worked with 400 organizations, over 400 organizations that have from only maybe two users up to 500 users and things that we've kind of focused on as well for an awful lot of organizations they need it badly is fundraising, case management and property management. So what we feel we bring to organizations is sector knowledge and experience, our IT consulting expertise, like a lot of the people that work in our organization worked in the private sector for years and years and years. Um, and so they just have decided to move across to the charity sector. And they feel that by working with Include, they can reach more charities by working directly with one charity. Um, so if you want any information at all on any of our programs, you can email us at info.ie. So I'll stop sharing there um, and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has or if you need more information about a particular product or even about eligibility. So please feel free to ask away. Margaret, have you kept an eye on some of the any questions or has there anything popped up yet? Um, just one or two, Marge. I maybe just present one initially. Um, 
if we already if we are already paying for a software, how do we change to the free version? Well, it depends on which software it is. So um, ideally, say say for um, if it was Zoom software that you were paying for already, and you wanted to move across to the uh, discounted one, you would have to look at your licenses when when the contract was due to expire and ensure that you turned it so that it didn't automatically renew and then to put your, get your discount code before that uh, contract is due to renew and then set up a new, start off the account again, a new account and apply the code. But it has happened at where organisations, we worked with an organisation a few years ago where they had eight different people had licenses and they had gotten all their own licenses and that was quite a <laughs> quite a difficult one for them to manage because they had to retire all those licenses over a period of time because they all had different lifespans on them. but they managed to get that all brought back and then by they were actually able to get the discount applied then to all those licenses by bringing them into one account um, Another one here, um, marriage eligibility. What is meant by GS for sports clubs? Okay, so sports club, if you have to register with your with the uh, with revenue as being uh, exempt from uh, tax, and if you you will get if you're a sports club and you've done that, all you need to do is contact uh, revenue to ask them for a search to say that you have this. Because we used to be able to see that information on the charities, on the Revenue Commissioner's site. They used to give a list every year of anyone who had a GS number, but they stopped doing that, they said, for data protection reasons. And so now we have to ask them to go to Revenue to actually get a cert to say, yes, they are eligible and they would then be eligible for the programme. Okay, uh, and the final one I think that I have here for now is, um, can I buy the same software several times? Yes, absolutely. Um, each program has each donor part. So like you could get, like I know there's one organisation and they're always getting Adobe licences, <laughs> uh, the Acrobat Pro. It's just sorry, uh, Marge, you froze. Um, I think sorry, did I? Few seconds, maybe if you don't mind. Uh, yeah. So Adobe, somebody recently, they one organisation, a few people in the organisation got Adobe Acrobat Pro, and then they were saying, "Oh, this is really good. Let's you know get that." So we have one organisation that has about twenty of those licenses at the moment, and so each each of their users are using them away. Um, but it depends on your organization. Some people, like because with the Acrobat Pro, it sits on your desktop, you can put it on another computer as well, but you can't use them at the same time. So sometimes people do share them, but ideally you should have one license per user. Okay. Um, any other questions from the room? Michael? Um, you, yeah, well, it's not really a question. It's just one thing, Marge. You know, uh, we're a letter County community centre. We've been using your services over the last couple of years. And I have to say for everybody else, it has been fantastic because when we moved and upgraded all our IT systems, we discovered um, Margin and Include, and uh, they were very, very helpful to us with Microsoft Premium. And uh, I mean, I have a laptop and I use it wherever I am because we use the, the cloud system and we also use the Bitfender and we're looking at other stuff as well. but. For us using it over the last couple of years, we find it absolutely invaluable. And I think it's a great, fantastic resource, Margin. Thank you for all your help over the over the last couple of years. Yeah, thank you. That's well, that's what we're here for, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and but, just to reiterate that, Marge, I actually received an email when we advertised the workshop from another community center in the county saying that they registered was included as a non-for-profit and they have saved they you have saved them hundreds. Um, they just renewed Wix support for the community website, which is under construction, and saved um, 400 euro. Um, and they get cheap Microsoft 365 and Survey Monkey too. So I think it's nice to hear positive feedback. So I did receive uh, two or three emails from community organisations across the county, um, all very positive on on the support and um, service they received from Include. That's good to hear. It's always good to get feedback because. 
again, as a charity, we don't have a huge budget to try and promote ourselves out there. And that we, it's generally, it's word of mouth where people hear about us. Um, we do, like we, we go to the wheel event each year and we have a stand there. And sometimes people notice us and they kind of go, oh, I've never heard about you before. But when we check into it, their, their organization has been registered, but they don't necessarily utilize us properly. And we do, you do, you send out reminders to people to say we're here, you know, you can still get this software, but so with charities and nonprofit organizations, personnel can change and suddenly the, the knowledge is gone and people say, oh, I don't know where we got that from. So it's it's good to for an event like this to hopefully highlight some of the things that we offer. But coming back to Microsoft 365, where I think it can be really useful for organizations as well is for your board members as well, that if they have a 365 license, they can access their board documents on the cloud rather than organizations having to print them off and send them or email them, which is not quite as secure. So it just gives an added level of security for your board. So it's something to keep in mind as well if, you're, if you are thinking about Microsoft Cloud. Yeah. Thanks, Hi Marge, uh, I'll probably step in there now. I just wanted to, unless anybody else has any more questions, I'll, I'll leave there for a second if anybody wants to take any questions or any more, because I have quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. All right. Uh, well, listen, Marge, first of all, I'm Michael Dorn. I'm the IT manager in Donegal Local Development. And I just want to just just want to say thanks very much. You know, over the last five years of me being in DLDC, I can tell you DLDC is obviously grown as an organization too to quite a large number. But we have saved thousands and thousands and thousands of euros over the last lot of years. So uh, thanks very much. And again, for all your help. But just for the people out there that maybe wants a wee bit more information, can I ask just whenever you mention the admin fee, the admin fee there now is obviously a cost that we're paying to include. Uh, do they have to pay any additional then for the software itself or is it just the admin fee? Okay. It depends, again, on the product and the donor partner. Generally speaking, speak, when it says donated, if the product has donated beside it, it means that the donor is donating it to the organization. But the administration fee is to cover the cost for include and our partners TechSoup and getting the, the software to you. After that, there would be no fees. Mm -hmm. the, then there are other products that have access to discount. Those ones, you would get a discount code and then you would pay additional fees to the donor partner. So with the like of, um, with Zoom, as we go back to Zoom, because that's a discount, it's an access to a discount rate. So you would pay us the administration of 18 euro and then you would get, I think it's about 128 euro or something like that is a Zoom license. You get a 50% discount with Zoom straight away when you go and apply the discount code. But your, your, your actual account is with, with Zoom. Perfect. And then just for yourselves, like obviously you're probably aware, a lot of uh, charity-based organizations, they don't have anybody in IT. So some of these things can be difficult to install or, you know, figure out and so on. Does Include offer any support to help install these applications onto their computers or, you know? Unfortunately not. Uh, we don't have the resources in-house to do that, unfortunately. Um, but most of the software is quite straightforward to do. The ones that are tricky, of course, are the likes of uh, Zoom, not Zoom, but um, Microsoft can be a bit tricky to install. And obviously Microsoft Cloud, again, is to get that initially set up, can be onerous for people. Um, we are looking at the moment with our partners TechSoup in providing a paid service where we will help you migrate to 365. We're hoping to launch that later this year. Um, we're again, we're not sure what the pricing is going to be around because we need to negotiate that with our partners TechSoup because they will be providing the, if you like, the, the techie end of things. Um, but we kind of think that for maybe 10 users, it could be somewhere around seven or 800 euro to do the initial installation and setup. So again, we don't have the full information on that at the moment because that's still in the pipeline. But again, all the time we're trying to develop more services that are beneficial to charities because again a lot of non small nonprofits don't have an IT company uh, you know in-house IT expertise in-house and um, even ourselves would include 
we outsource some of our IT fees, um, requirements that we have. And just there, a question from Scott there. Can a community group that's not CLG registered get software discounts or do you need to be a CLG? You need to be registered with one of the bodies that I stated before, because that's a requirement through our partners, TechSoup and the donor partners, that's their restriction. So for the program, you either have to be a CLG or a registered charity or a sporting organization. And maybe at this stage now, I'm probably just gonna step in and say that for any community group or any uh, organization that's out there, that's potentially a small one, maybe only one or two people. And if they're using like a Gmail account, an Outlook account or a Hotmail account or something along the lines, that obviously include offers the Microsoft Cloud up to 300 licenses. And that allows you then to put the name of your organization at the bottom of the email. It's very good in the sense that if you're sending an email, it looks like it's coming from a more trusted source like DLDC or I'm looking at the Letter County Community Center, you know, so that uh, it, your, it, your email address in my case would be mdorn at dldc.org and not at gmail.com. So it just looks more, um, it looks very professional coming from uh, a, a proper source. And, and, and everybody's entitled to those licenses as, as they're registered. Isn't that correct, Marge, isn't it? That's if correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And interesting enough, we worked on a project about two years ago with an organization, a network organization um, that had, they had something like 17 different branches and each of those branches only had maybe two or three people working in them, but they were all using personal emails and it just looked really unprofessional. And they were quite big, but um, Microsoft, because they were in one of those data center areas where there was a big da Microsoft data center beside them, Microsoft gave them some funding. And so with ourselves and our partners, TechSoup in Europe, we worked on getting them migrated over to 365. Um, so over a period of probably about 18 months, it took in full for them to get, again, to get everybody on board and involved in it and committed to it. And now that they're up and running, they're, they, they're so happy that they've done that. And they use Teams all the time to communicate and they share their files. And so it was hugely beneficial. But it's that thing, it just makes things look a bit more professional if you can have your own, if you like, domain email. Yeah. Um, just another few questions here now, just to finish up. Uh, can we install the software on community members' laptops as not all community groups will have laptops from the organization, so they're normally installing them on personal laptops? So can we install that software on non-organization-owned laptops? Absolutely, you can, because like for a lot of organizations, you might be a, a, a totally voluntary community group, and none of them are going to have pay, you know, organization laptops so they have to use their own personal devices. So of course you can put the software on. It's up to your own internal policies on what you can install and what devices. So each organization can decide, but that's totally open. It, the main thing is with these licenses is that they're for people who do, if you like, the actual work of the organization. So just say for my, you get licenses from Microsoft and they say they've 300, like you can get up to 300 free business basic licenses. Yeah. They should all be only for people that work for the organization, whether on a volunteer basis or um, a paid position. If you're for, they have to be doing, like your board would be considered part of like um, staff essentially, and they would be considered, they will be eligible for those licenses. But if you're just a volunteer ad hoc, they come popping in and out, then you wouldn't be eligible for those licenses. Okay. And, and just in terms of support then from the, from the software, as you're getting this at a highly reduced discounted rate, will you still get the same level of support as someone that has paid the full price for it from the uh, providers? From the providers. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And can the can the access be taken away, or once you purchase it, it's kind of yours? No, it's once you have, once based. you purchase it, you it is yours. And for most of them, they're on premises um, yeah. licenses, so that they're, they're yours. And um, the other thing, particularly things like DocuSign is another donor partner of ours, and they have they actually have a, a dedicated nonprofit um, support team that work with nonprofits to help them utilize those tools. 
Yeah, and then obviously I think one of the big ones other than Microsoft is the Zoom license. So obviously if you get the Zoom license, you can offer it for an admin fee and then a 50% discount because I think that might be interesting for a lot here as well. That's, that, that's right, isn't it? 50% yeah, discount on right, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah 50%. Uh, I have no more questions unless anybody else has any questions. Okay, is there anything from anybody else? If you have a question, feel free to jump in on mute. Um, no, if not, um, can I just quickly ask again if anybody hasn't already signed in to just sign in with your name and organization. So um, when we're um, emailing the recording and the resources that Marge is going to share that we um, have everyone included on that circulation. Um, and other than that, if there's no questions, um, Marge, thank you so much. Loads of information there. Um, and I think... Um, I no doubt you will be getting calls from from the room after. And That's thank you very much, Marge, for giving up your time today to come and talk to us. Much appreciated. And thank you to everybody for joining as well. As I say, it's it's um it's interesting to hear, and it's it's anything that brings benefit or you know to community and voluntary organisations is always very welcome. So thank you, um, and thank you to everybody. Have a nice day, and we'll stop the recording. Thanks very much, Margaret. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks you. very much, Bye. Marge. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Margaret. Bye. Bye.